I was sitting at home one night and uh, I saw the image of Alan Cody, the drowned Syrian boy, wash up on the shore. And you know, I did a bit of CSI on the, the photo and I looked at the body and I, you know, I worked out how he washed up and how long he would have been in the water by the colour of his skin and how his skull was pacing towards the, the water. That means you know, he'd been uh, violently drowned and he'd washed and he's, he kind of ended up face down because of the weight of his skull. And, uh, and when I looked at that image, you know, you know, it's pretty easy as a lifesaver and a lifeguard to kind of work out the, the mechanism of drowning. And then I went, well, you know, I know how to save lives. And why am I not on Lesbos rescuing refugees? There was a, a little kind of ad on my Facebook. International Life Saving Association looking for lifeguards to go to uh, Lesbos, Greece to rescue Syrian refugees. The power of the universe just presented this and I clicked on, put in my details, put in my qualifications, got an email back, you're going, Team One. Lifeguard Hellas was this Greek NGO who set up a kind of a team on Lesbos. They'd seen the crisis, they were Greeks and they were there to be part of their country and they had no real support. So they reached out to the International Life Saving Association and said, yeah, we need professional lifeguards. And so they were the ones who were the family that invited us over. And we all kind of uh, had the first night of kind of getting to know each other, getting to know our experiences, you know, getting to know um, what brought us here. And it's amazing that, you know, we all had different languages, but we all kind of said the same words. So we'd only been on the beach for 45 minutes. And then here we have, a refugee boat coming towards us. Then it's this double-decker uh, kind of like um, shipping boat that you'd see out on a you know a day trip in Port Melbourne, and there's 200 plus people on it. They're like 218 people, and you look at them and they're crammed like sardines. There's kids. I have a a baby in my hand down from this refugee boat. And, it was, and the arms were blue, like it was frozen. It was like this little frozen baby, like it had been in, in the Antarctica. And it was just, and it was lips were blue and the eyes were glazed and just literally down, given to me and passing it to the German, to the French, to the English, to the other volunteers. And it was just this moment of just, it, it was like the world had stood still. You know, you could just smell that was fear. And then as you're, you know, taking them off the boat and you're taking them to the land, you know, the, the colour is coming back in their face, you know, the, you know, they touch the land and it's, I'm free. You know, I, I've made it. And, you know, I'm emancipated. I, I've, I, I'm alive. It's busy chaos and crazy and humanity and then it's dead still. And it's just like you're, you know, just sitting watching the beach. You know, there's nothing. And then all of a sudden, the screaming fear, um, kind of chaos. Uh, and when it was calm and quiet, you know, we all had time to think. We all had time to reflect. And a lot of us were just looking at each other going, well, we've been on a plane for 24 hours. We'd been traveling. We landed and we just did probably the single most greatest things with our lives that day. We just instantly changed our lives forever. You know, looking at the water, you know, it just looks like water, but it was a graveyard. You know, and the, the coast of Lesbos is a graveyard for many people. You know, when you look at it, when you look at death, it, it's, it's very, very cold. It's very absolute. Well, you could imagine, you know, getting on that ferry at Sydney Harbour, going across to Manly, and on when you get to Manly, you're free for the rest of your life and freedom is so close and you know why would you not risk it you know you know if you've been raped tortured abused you've been bombed to get on a boat to get actually out at sea the amount of uh, guts and courage and absolute fear that you would have it, you know I couldn't imagine it I couldn't imagine saying to my mother hey mum we're gonna escape this hellhole we're going to get on a boat and we're going to go 50 kilometres in the middle of nowhere and this is going to be our 50-50 shot at life, at freedom, at just <laughs> changing our lives forever or we're going to die together. 
I'm the narrator of their story, of the people we, I rescued, and we, we did a wonderful job, but ultimately it is me on this side of the world that needs to tell you exactly what I saw, because their story is way more powerful than mine.